Can I have your attention, please? Uh, gonna, we're about to start the presentation now. Um, my name is Miguel Lojinha. I'm from Portugal. I work for the OAE project. Um, by, by my left is Sala. She works with me. By my right are Mathilde and Frédéric. They work for um, OAE project as well from um, ESA Partey in France. So this presentation is about the OAE, and we named it uh, more open, more popular. So this is the summary of the presentation. Uh, we're talk going to talk about um, why we're um, making OAE more open. Uh, then we'll focus on both instances that um, both Unity and, uh, sorry, both research and Zerporté maintain. And then we'll uh, focus on the road ahead. Uh, we'll talk about stuff that we've been doing, stuff that we'll be doing uh, in the future. So to start with, um, why, why do we, does OAE need to be more open? Because uh, the OAE is already open source, right? Uh, it's an imperial project. Uh, it includes a free cloud tenancy with uh, academic governance. Uh, you can, as a user, you can sign up for a free account, and it uses um, free standards. So it, this is pretty open already, right? Um, but it's not enough for us, and we uh, are looking to um, build on that. Uh, we are making OAE easier to connect and make it easier for external developers to contribute to the project, and we also um, drafted a um, new vision statement in uh, 2017 to set us on a new strategic uh, direction where openness is um, uh, an, an important milestone. So in what comes to making OAE easier to connect, uh, these are some of the improvements that we've, um, we've been working on. Uh, you might have uh, heard Malcolm in the first presentation talk about um, LTI and, the, uh, and uh, the importance of uh, supporting standards-based, um, st supporting standards to make um, OAE more um, more open. Uh, we also um, introduced some changes uh, to support Chitty and Big Blue Button, which uh, are different open source projects, and we um, we're working on integrating uh, these tools to make it more uh, interconnected. Um, OAE is, uh, since like um, our uh, recent meeting in London, is now an LTI consumer. Uh, we've been working with the Tsugi project uh, to make it, like, to build this ecosystem and break ground on the NGDLE, uh, where Tsugi provides uh, open standards implementation, and we're including uh, LTI-enabled tools in OAE and trying to make it work so that uh, we uncover this uh, huge potential of having dif different developers, third-party third developers, uh, building stuff that then will fit and will leverage OAE um, features. So this whole integration, this whole work with Tsugi that um, we've been that started like a month, month ago, a month and a half ago, is all about trying to uncover the potential, trying to break ground on the NGTLE and trying to see uh, what we can come up with uh, regarding the um, LTI integration and potential. So this is a beta mock-up that uh, resulted from that meeting. Um, it, this is a typical OE screen where in the group you can actually um, build, uh, sorry, you can actually add LTI tools to a group, make it like a classroom. And you don't, you're, you're not limited to what OE offers. Uh, you can just um, pick up some LTI tool and then bring it to OAE and then use it and leverage in that group. So we can do a lot of different things with this. This is a really simple example, which is bringing a map to uh, an OAE group. Um, this is not an OAE feature. Uh, it's something that someone else wrote, but you can easily bring it to, OE, to the OAE ecosystem and, uh, well, make stuff with it or interact with it. Um, in what comes to the, um, to the NGD, NGDLE integration, um, this is what we're, um, this is the main goal, to allow third-party developers and companies to 
build stuff and then bring it that bring it to OAE and make it interconnected. So a lot of a lot of stuff can be done um, uh, regarding this. Uh, you you don't you don't really have any limits to what you can do. It's, it's, uh, you just have to support the LTI and then you'll be able to to bring it that application to a group and then just customize your classroom based on that. Um, so. LTI features include, um, well, this is the um, list of LTI features, uh, probably not uh, a little bit too technical, but the main goal is that um, a lot of, a lot, a lot of um, applications can be built. A lot of, uh, it's not up to the OAE to decide what third-party develop, third developers will be able to do. It's just uh, in this ecosystem which just provide the, the um, which just paved the paved the way for developers to build their own stuff. Um, so it's still a very basic integration right now. Um, there is no data flowing from the application to the, the OAE, um, and there is no connection to any app store. It's just a visual integration uh, as it stands. But in the future, we um, we have a few ideas to make it uh, a richer experience to allow integration so that, for instance, an application can uh, communicate to OAE and, uh, for instance, use the OAE notification system. So um, these are some examples of tools that uh, could be uh, built and integrated. Attendance, tests, peer grading, uh, peer, yeah, peer grading. Uh, a map or you know something else, but again, there's no limit to what third party third party developers can do. Uh, you can build like a flip classroom application and integrate it as easily as um, these more basic tools. <coughs> so, um, like I said, um, new tools can be um, as creative as um, as the developer wants. Uh, it can include more flexible approaches to p pedagogy. Uh, it may include integrations with external applications as well. Uh, or you can just um, implement new forms of interaction between your students and um, teachers. So um, about the Jitsi integration, uh, it's for those of you who don't know Jitsi, it's an open source uh, video conferencing uh, platform. Uh, what we did was to add it uh, to OAE groups so that if a group uh, is collaborating or discussing something and suddenly needs to um, uh, enter a video conferencing, they, it's just one click away. Um, in what comes to making uh, OAE easier to contribute, uh, well, uh, some, some, some of the... Um, these are some of the enhancements that we've been working on. Uh, so it, OAE is built on Node.js, and uh, in the future, we'll be upgrading the Node.js version um, so that you know, it's more modern. Um, it's been it's built to scale, so there will be no, um, uh, well, uh, it will be easier to, uh, easy to build something that will need to scale based on the current infrastructure. Um, now there's a, we've just pushed out a new release including dockerization so that if you're a third party developer, if, you just, if you're just starting, uh, you can easily now uh, set up the whole system in like five minutes, which is a huge improvement on, on uh, what we had previously. And we also worked on um, a lot of new documentation and contributor guides. Um, so, for those of you who are not aware with Docker, Docker is like a this new uh, container um, technology. Um, we are not using Docker beyond development uh, right now, but we might um, we might do that in the future. Right now, our main goal was um, to make it easy for developers to just set up the whole system. The whole system is quite complex. It includes messaging system, uh, Elasticsearch, RabbitMQ, uh, Nginx, a lot of uh, different uh, components that work together. So 
uh, it's been quite an effort to make it all work in Docker, but uh, the, it's been done, and uh, now it's just it's pretty simple to, to make it work. Uh, let me just give you a glimpse of uh, how that, work, that works right now. So um, if, you, if you clone the repository from GitHub, uh, you just have to basically follow three different, different commands and then run Docker Compose up, which, uh, well, I'm on the Mac, so it's gonna be uh, a little bit slow uh, due to volume, map volume mapping. Uh, but um, it will just start uh, dumping out some logs, and in the end, uh, we'll get the whole uh, system running in no time. Let me get to that after. So, like I said, um, there's a new vision statement from the project as well. Um, the main objectives were uh, these three, to uh, support the em emergence of a new ecosystem uh, by supporting um, LTI and working with Sugi. Um, well, that's actually not part of the vision. That's something that we did as a result of the vision. Uh, being a great place to collaborate and providing collaborative infrastructure for the wider ecosystem. This is something that we're looking to um, make available to third-party apps um, that integrate via LTI. So basically, go, basically going back to Docker, this is what it looks like. Um, a lot of logs there. Um, and it's been under a minute and the system is running now. Even though there are some errors there, but the whole thing is working. Okay. So um, still on the, on the new vision, this is the, the rationale behind the, the text that we published in the, um, the manifesto. Um, discussion and collaboration of the, at the heart of academia. This is pretty much um, goes to uh, fit uh, what Malcolm said earlier about uh, transform, transforming academia. This is our, um, our contribute to that. Um, also focusing on learning, but also on research uh, and well, because it's really important to have it all on a single ecosystem and not separate. Um, so we feel that we are already well placed to do that. Uh, like I said, OAE is an open source project. Uh, it's multi-tenant, it's well connected. It includes several open source projects uh, within. And um, well, it's being used by a fair amount of people as we, as we speak. And Matilda will focus on that um, later. Um, so, more about the ecosystem, um, standards, uh, working with different projects, all about openness. Um, okay, so, Mitchell, please. Oh. So, so. Okay. <laughs> right, so, when we say OAE is more popular, what do we mean? Uh, there are two major instances of OAE that are running. I'm going to talk about Unity, power provided to us by research. Uh, research is a company based in London uh, with additional offices in South Africa and Australia. It employs 85 plus people. And uh, the main goal of research is to provide universities with up-to-date information about research. Uh, including research funding opportunities, news about research policy in the UK, in Europe, and all over the world about UK and Europe are our main focus areas. Uh, Unity is an OAE instance that research is running with over 18,000 tenancies. Many of them are not adopted yet, but we invite everyone to adopt one if they want. Uh, we have made it as easy as possible for a university to adopt their tenancy. All they really need to do is go to the unity.ac website, start typing the name of their university, and click go. If, 
for some reason you don't happen to have one, we also have a networks tenancy, which is available to everyone who doesn't have a tenancy of their own. Or you can, you know, contact us and we will create you one. Uh, we have infrastructure of policies and subcontracts. We are very careful about keeping your data safe in the European Union. No offence. Um, <laughs> and we offer a service level agreement under which the university now owns all their data. Uh, otherwise, we are the data controller, but we don't use our powers for evil. Or at least try not to. Uh, pricing is $1,880 a year for an entire university. And we have paying customers. You'll be glad to hear. We are. Uh, we have a COCO tag that is the Jan Code of Conduct, which offers some privacy guarantees for tenancies using Shibboleth, and an RNS tag, which guarantees identity for collaborative environment. That means that basically we don't have to um, touch your identity, it comes directly from the university to Unity. Uh, more tenancies and more users. Uh, better SSO integration. We have now become members of Incommon and many other access management federations. And we have recently started a Unity user group which allows everyone to come in and leave comments about what they want to see, how they want us to evolve and also provides information about new releases, etc. Uh, I think that that is all that I have on Unity, so I'm going to hand over to Mathilde. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Um, so, I'm just going to say a few words about um, a support I, which you may also know as the Aperial Sisters Organization. Um, again, Dolphin's words, not mine, actually. So, Esipata is a French consortium with a bit more than 70 members. Um, its main goal is to develop, support, and promote um, open source solutions in higher education. So, at the beginning in 2002, um, its, prime, its primary um, objective was to help higher ed uh, institutions find a platform, um, a portal to gather all their digital services into one single place. Um, in order to make it easier for students, teachers, faculty members, etc., um, in their daily life um, on campus and at home. But over the years, that becomes much more than that. Um, the institution has identified new expectations and needs, so the mission of the concession has expanded far more than just our work in uh, the portal solutions. And nowadays, we have uh, nine working groups, so each one of them represents a team of people from our community collaborating on specific topics like authentication, um, analytics, um, OAE, for instance, and uh, yeah, a lot of topics that we are working on at the moment. Um, but to achieve all of that, um, we've obviously had the help of the um, of partners, uh, um, well, the institution themselves, of course, but also. Um, some partnership with uh, the MU and uh, Cocktail, which are both uh, software editors for business application uh, for a higher ed institution. And the ministry has also been a great support um, in our task, and well, I can't forget to mention Aperio, with which you, we started collaborating with for more than 10 years now, and when they were still Jessig and, and Sakai. And because we share the same values, I think, in the main mission, and this collaboration has been quite productive and has been growing over the last five years, uh, especially uh, when we first signed our um, first MOU. And uh, I think uh, Fran will talk about it about more, about the UAE stuff. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Frédéric Danon and the coordinator of the ESUP OA Working Group. This working group has several objectives. Maintaining the French version, defining a strategy for implementation in our community, de developing new future and widgets, 
but also sharing experience feedback with other institutions and partners like we are today. So, you may be wondering, why did we not use a Unity instance, for example? Well, some people may call us paranoid, but data privacy is a main concern for us. So, the idea of relying uh, on third-party host services was ruled out from the start. Therefore, we had no choice but to host our um, instance, which is what we did in April 2014. As of today, we have 15 tenants for university or, commun or community of different size. Other CEO uh, um, have already uh, showed interest in opening a tenant for their institution. So this number is accepted to increase in the near future. Today, we have more than 11,000 users on the platform, which means that this number was more than doubled in just one year. On our own instance, we have over 2,700 groups and 32,000 documents. In France, OI is being used in quite different contexts and levels. We have identified several use cases, either around the organization of national or international working groups or collaboration with faculty department. Students uh, also use the platform to share course notes, work on pedagogical projects, or even interact with a professor. Over the years, users' feedback was always been extremely positive, and OI is now considered a great asset for teamwork, no matter the size of the group. And that's mostly because people love how easy to use OI is. So now, we are going to focus on some of the new future and other stuff the OA community is currently working on. After the contribution of JITC, we chose to develop backend tools to facilitate, to facilitate basic operation. The first thing we worked on was, to the, uh, on was the transfer of accounts between tenants which can be quite in the sense people tend to transfer from an institution to another, at least on during their education or career. From the user point of view, the process is actually quite simple. They generate a random code from the account they want, they want to transfer the data from. and logged in uh, on their new account on the other tenant, the user enters their former email address and the generated code to validate the transfer, and voila. Technically speaking, this was not that easy to implement, but we are about done now. The code is being reviewed by the Y team, so we may need to make some change, but hopefully this future should be available in before the end of the year? Yeah. yeah. Okay. In meantime, we are currently working on the actual deletion of uh, user account and data. As you may know, and um, admin can delete an account in the current version, but also it does is mark the account as deleted in the database and make it impossible for the user to log in. As you, 
as you can imagine, this kind of dilatation does not comply with the existing and upcoming regulation in France and the European Union in regards to data privacy and the right to be forgotten. There is still a lot of work to do, but we hope to submit a first poll request no later than September of this year. Thank you for your attention. So I will now turn the floor over to Miguel. Thank you. So let me just tell you about uh, a bit about user experience. This is one of the um, long-standing priorities um, as we work on OE. And um, the reason is uh, user experience is like a never-ending never job. And there's, there's quite a few reasons for that. Um, New forms of interaction is one of those. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you have new devices coming coming up. You have new best practices. You have new ways of interact with content, and um, and that makes for a software uh, development team it, it, that that's an extra focus because you want to keep up. You want to provide users those best practices, those in, forms of interaction. So. It's um, something that we uh, have been doing and will be doing in the, in the future. Uh, we've also been working on new uh, mockups, and this is one of the, the examples that we brought. Um, this is like the, the group interface, the activity feed of a group interface uh, revamped, uh, which looks a lot better than um, it actually looks right now. Um, this is another example of it, um, including a sidebar uh, where navigation is placed. So um, the whole thing is about user experience and uh, navigation and usability, making it easier uh, for the user to use the product and uh, you know, feel good about using the product. Um, yet another screenshot of, the, um, of a group uh, where you can see both the activity feed and the description and um, the sidebar navigation. Um, this is an example of a revamped uh, interface showing the folders and files of a user, um, which is um, an issue right now, because uh, files are separate from, from the folder, folders, uh, which makes it quite difficult for uh, uh, newcomers and um, to, to actually get organized. Um, so, that being showed, um, all, uh, the message I want to convey after the, the presentation is um, we've, been, we've been doing uh, some interesting stuff lately. Um, our focus is, has been both the, the developers, uh, which can now develop LTI-enabled tools and integrate them in, into OAE, and the user uh, to, make, to make it um, a really good uh, user experience. So. If you have any suggestions from either point of view, uh, either the user or the developer, uh, if you're interested into, L into LTI, uh, if you have this crazy idea of, a, of an app that you would like to build, but you also need um, the, um, the ground infrastructure for it to work, or if you have some specific needs, please come to us. Uh, tell us what you need. Tell us what you'd like to be built or what you'd like to see built uh, into OE, and uh, we'll, we'll glad take, gladly take that feedback uh, into our roadmap and um, development uh, priorities. Um, there's going to be a buff session later today, so feel free to participate and talk to us there, uh, and feel free to contact us uh, at these uh, email addresses. Um, thank you. Oh, right. So any questions, any comments um, right now, feel, please feel free to, to ask. Oh, um, yeah. Can we, can we have the mic over there? Hi. Yeah, so I wanted to ask about the LTI integration. You had a, like a list of LTI tools up there that you, you'd used. Surely any LTI tool would work, wouldn't it? Uh, so... Are you asking if any LTI tool is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so LTI uh, is pretty um, generic in, in the sense that um, yeah, no, I, I as soon as you support the standard, uh, there's, well, 
as far as I see it. Uh, there's no way it's not, not going to work. So my next question is, um, well, Sakai can be used as a LTI tool provider. So, I mean, have you tried connecting the two together and having all the Sakai tools inside OAE? Because that, that would seem quite that's a good exciting. Question. We haven't tried yet, but we definitely will. Uh, currently, the limitation with the LTI tools is that uh, we don't have information coming back to us from the tools. So okay. the information lives in the tool, inside the tool, hmm. which is, it's the first version. It's um, yeah. not finished. Yeah. Uh, that's basically where we are going to move next. And after that, there's going to be a lot more than we can do with it. I had one more question, if that's okay. Have you thought of making OAE uh, a tool provider? So Sakai could link to it and have it as an extra tool? Yes, we have thought about it. That would be absolutely brilliant. Yes. Uh, it's something that we talked about with uh, Chuck in the meeting that we had about OAE and LTI and Tugi uh, in April. Uh, but we decided that basically to go where we need to go, we should become a tool consumer first. It doesn't mean that we have ruled out being a tool provider as well. Any other questions? Okay then, so uh, thanks again for your time and patience.